You agree with me, don't you? The music kids listen to today is horrible. This new band is the worst of them all. Mm. It was the much-discussed scandal lyrics on Dog Son's new CD that made Dick Priest call for the meeting. Crush Dad a Mummy too. What a name for a record! Our children should be listening to nice bands like The Sunshine Family. We're the Sunshine Family. Does anybody have any suggestions about what we can do? I was thinking that the children should have their own music competition. Stars in your eyes, but with nice music. Great, 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 idea. Idea. great idea. This is how we treat records like this. <laughs> oh, dear. Maybe the adults were worrying unnecessarily. The most popular band in the class was the girl band, Lady Girls. Even the three friends and Jerry liked them, but they would never admit that to each other. What a load of rubbish music the teacher was playing today when she told us about the competition. I didn't even understand why she played it. I think she was talking about the history of music. It could have been Mozart. No, it was the Sunshine family. My mom and dad liked them. I'm sure Dick Priest wants us to copy their stage show. Never. We'll be the Lady Girls. Then we'll win easily. Everyone likes the Lady Girls. But if we are going to be the Lady Girls, we'll have to put on makeup and dress up as girls, won't we? We'll be a heavy metal band. The three friends sighed with relief. We decide who we're going to be on Stars in Your Eyes. We'll be the Lady Girls. We're going to be a heavy metal band. <laughs> Which one? We haven't decided yet. Maybe you don't know any. Why don't you ask my brother Tony? He only listens to heavy metal. Are you stupid? We only listen to heavy metal as well. Tony hurried to assume a cool position on the bed, only to discover that it was some of Tess's insufferable classmates who were waiting outside the door. And what do you want? We're having a competition at school, and we've lost all of our heavy metal records. So we were wondering if we could borrow one from you. A diabolical smile came over Tony's lips. Suddenly he became very helpful. <laughs> So, who are you planning on being, then? <laughs> maybe... maybe... what's their name again? Dogson, perhaps? You got it. Dogson. Dogson rules. Yeah, they really rock! Don't lose the CD, and don't tell your dad who lent it to you. We promise, now we're going home to rehearse. <sighs> real bands never rehearse. Jerry, get real. Real bands never rehearse. Even though they got to borrow the record, they looked a little disappointed. Finally, Frank said what they all were thinking. We like heavy metal, but everyone else likes the lady girls. Linda, Mimi and Tess are going to win. But then Jerry had an idea. It was all pretty simple. All they had to do was to sneak into the school's assembly hall and make a little swap. On Friday evening, the assembly hall filled with expectant parents. Dear congregation, welcome to Stars in Your Eyes with nice music. The first contestant tonight is Andy. Good evening. My name is Elvis. In the changing room, Linda, Mimi and Tess had an unpleasant surprise. Where are our lady girls' clothes? Where are our lady girls' clothes? I'm going crazy! We're, We're going, going crazy! crazy! Ladies and gentlemen, Linda, Mimi and Tess! The girls had no choice. Reluctantly, they walked on stage wearing the 70s outfits. Come on and disco!
go. We are the Lady Girls. Choice. They look exactly like Sunshine Family used to do when they played this song. We're the Sunshine Family, so come sing along with me. We're the Sunshine Family. It seemed that it had already been decided who was going to win the stars in your eyes with nice music competition. One thing was for certain, it wouldn't be the next gang. The three friends and Jerry had studied rock videos on TV closely and knew exactly how a heavy metal band acted. And a real heavy metal hit should, of course, be concluded with a cool stage dive. No, no! What did I tell you? It's very dangerous to listen to bands like Dog Sun. Where did you get that? This record? The three friends and Jerry didn't even dare thinking what could happen if they snitched on Tony. Well! But not to obey Jerry's dad seemed even more dangerous. Oh, from Tony. Tony! 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 Now comes your verse! Sing! When I get a hold of them, when I get a hold of them. While Tony was sweating in the gymnasium, Dick Priest arrived home to the vicarage. Did you see that? So cool! If only the guys in the class could dress like that. I don't understand how they dare show themselves. They're such a bunch of hopeless nerds. Oops! Why haven't we thought of that? What? Ah! Frank's plan was simple. If they just got hold of some cool clothes, the girls wouldn't be able to resist them. <laughs> ah. Do you think it will work? Of course! You heard them yourself! Ah! After school, they went straight to the local clothing store. Something told them that the clothes in the store wouldn't impress the girls. Now what? Ah! Hello, airheads! When Jerry heard what was at stake, he suggested that they pop down to the store to read some fashion magazines to get a better grasp of the subject. Check it out! Looking like that, you'd hit it off with Linda right away. Wow, we really need to shape up. And here are the addresses and everything. This is it. Wow. And what can I do for you, young man? Uh, I, I, I wonder how much those cool clothes cost. Those cool clothes? A hundred pounds for a t-shirt? But Jerry wasn't to be discouraged. At least we could get some cool haircuts. Thomas and Eric looked at Frank, who finally gave in. OK, but this time Jerry has to ask. Is this enough for a cool haircut? <laughs> <laughs> Deeply disappointed, they returned home. It was obvious to them that they were destined to live and die as nerds. But just as they got off the bus, Jerry had a brilliant idea. We don't have to buy any clothes. We can fix them, fix the clothes ourselves. What? How? We'll redecorate our own to make them look as cool as the ones in the magazine. Eh, it will never work. Yes, it will. It's simple. And then we'll cut each other's ah! hair. No one cuts mine. Guys, come on. It can't get any worse than this. Hmm... Okay, okay, let's do it! The new fashion designers set about their task with needle, thread, scissors and a great deal of enthusiasm. But Fred, what are you going to do with the sewing machine? Uh, just something for home economics. 
Everything was to be new and different. Hair, trousers, sweaters, shoes. There were no limits to their inventive experiment. Frank, Thomas, Eric and Jerry worked on their new clothes and haircuts deep into the night. And the following morning, they entered the schoolyard full of self-confidence. But the reaction wasn't quite what they had expected. <laughs> what is that? Four walking bin bags who have been run over by a lawnmower. I didn't think it could get any worse, but it has. Quiet now. Don't forget that Jimmy Hart from the non-criminal generation will visit us on Friday. When school was over for the day, Frank had a few things he wanted to say to Jerry. Yeah, it couldn't get any worse, right? It's not my fault that they didn't understand how cool we are. Ah, oh, yes it is. Your fault. Your, your fault. 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 Stop your fault. it. Ah. Ow. Ow. Stop. Boys. Boys. Ow. This is fantastic. Ow. Ow. Come here. Ah. Come here. The fashion editor at Cool Guide had spent weeks chasing a new street fashion, and finally it looked like she'd found it. You look fabulous. I'll set up a photo session immediately. Can you come by tomorrow at three? Here's my card. Didn't I tell you it was a great idea? Just wait until Linda sees us in Cool Guide. Tell me a little about yourself. You must be living a rough life on the streets. Mm. You're a gang, mm. right? Mm. Mm. And mm. practically mm. live outside mm. the rules mm. and morality of society. Uh. <gasps> Listen to this. Bad boys. They call themselves the friends. They are friends, but not yours. They lead a hard life full of criminality and violence. Their clothes express the combination, aggressiveness and ruthlessness, which is a must for life on the streets. Wow, that sounds really cool. But why is Frank's head blurred? I guess they are tougher than we thought. What? I've always known that they were a tough gang. Look, there they are. Hi, do you want to hang out after school today? Huh? What? Why? Yeah, of course! Why not meet here after the last lesson? Sure. I think Linda wants you to be her boyfriend. Come on now, Frank. We have to go in. Frank! During the last lesson of the day, the class was visited by Jimmy Hart from No Crime Generation. He is fantastic. Gorgeous. I can't believe it. Is it possible to be that good looking? So, now I hope you understand how important it is to stay away from violence and crime. Don't be impressed by criminal people just because they happen to wear cool clothes and appear in trendy magazines. This article in Cool Guide is a frightening example of what I mean. I don't understand why we have to read about how some pathetic hooligans dress. Are you still here, girls? The class is over. Bye now. Hey, Linda, do you want to hang out now? Get lost. Exactly. Stay away from us, you hooligans. We don't want to have anything to do with ruffians and criminals like you. Whose stupid idea was this, huh? Whose idea? <coughs> I think that it's about time that we did something for our local black sheep. I suggest a new house for Oscar. Yes, that shed he lives in is far too run down. What? Are we going to waste money on a good-for-nothing like him when our golf course is a source of shame? Seventeen hole. Now, is that supposed to represent a golf course? Is it? Is it? The town's leading men and women had met to allocate the money from the charity funds. Committee decides... A new house for Oscar. This is scandalous. I'm not going to invite any of you when it's time for the grand opening of my new double garage. You can be sure of that. Well, 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 well we could always... Don't even think about it. A decision is a decision. Huh? <laughs> 
spot on. If you want war, then we'll give you one. We challenge you to a snowball fight outside the school. Okay, but then we want a snow castle for our stronghold. Frank told the boys the plan of action. When ice cream storm, we storm the castle. Storm! With fearless looks in their eyes, the boys ran towards the castle where Linda, Mimi and Tess were hiding behind a wall of ice-compacted snow. You don't stand a chance. Of course we do. They're girls. Not unless you have a secret weapon. The three friends requested a temporary ceasefire while Jerry ran home to put together his secret weapon. Now we'll show them. In five seconds, their snow castle is going to be erased from the face of the earth. Vicious Oscar had, in the course of his wild life, awoken in many different places for many different reasons. But never before had he been disturbed during his afternoon nap by a giant ice ball. Oh, no! What are we going to do? About what? It's not our problem. But he'll freeze to death. Frank had many times in the past suggested that they blow up Vicious Oscar's shed. But to leave him to freeze to death seemed a little too cold-blooded. Well, what shall we do then? Someone will have to take him home while we fix the roof. Not me. Not me? Not me. It was Jerry's fault. It was his catapult. Home with me? You must be joking! No way! I refuse! These are the construction plans for Roy Johnson's garage. And these are the plans for Oscar's shed. The construction workers are waiting. Get going! I look like a snowman in this. I'm a snowman! <laughs> Jerry prayed a silent prayer that Oscar wouldn't play snowman when they got home to his place. I'm a snowman! Boo! <laughs> hey, what do you think you're playing at, you lunatic? <laughs> While Jerry fought to get Fisher's Oscar home without any major catastrophes taking place, the three friends oh. struggled with the shed. Oh! Here you go. The approval and plans for your garage. About time, too. <laughs> Jerry knew that it wouldn't be much fun if his father discovered that he had let vicious Oscar into the house. Oh, steaming passion, my favourite. You always seem to get it right, my very own little Santa Claus. My Amazon woman, here's to 15 wonderful years. Jerry was lucky. His parents were celebrating their wedding anniversary and didn't have eyes or ears for anyone else. Oh boy. <laughs> ah. Table tennis. Ooh, I like table tennis. Jerry looked with sadness at what had been his last ping-pong ball. Ow! Ow! Ah! What in blazes? Is there a burglar? I bet someone's trying to break in. My steaming passion. Oh. Right, that's it. That's the last straw! It's probably just the stereo, and a record has got stuck. And I suppose the stereo finished off your mother's bottle of perfume, too! You just wait here! Jerry didn't feel too confident about his future prospects. And don't show your face here again! Or else you'll know what for, you flippin' unemployed layabout! It's a disgrace in my house! Jerry! Jerry! You won't be getting any pocket money until a new bottle of perfume has been paid for! It's almost nicer now than before the ice ball. It is nicer. No! no. Stop! Wait! Stop there, boys. This is dangerous stuff, this. No children allowed on this height. 
This is going to be nice, don't you think, Oscar? A new house. Goodness me. What a lot of perfume you smell of today, Oscar. <laughs> Have you got a woman in your life now, then? Hmm, Oscar? At Roy Johnson's house, something was also being built. Is this supposed to be a garage? Well, you idiots! I want this gone! Pull it down! Hmm. Well, what do you say, Oscar? It turned out in fine, don't you think? Admittedly, there are no windows, but never mind. You've got two great big doors instead. What a waste of time. I told you it wasn't our problem. I wonder what happened to Jerry. Jerry didn't have to see the results of the three friends' labor being smashed to smithereens. His consideration and hospitality had been rewarded with him being grounded for two weeks.